Well, hello, I'm Johnny Rowland, your host of the Shooting Show with Friends. Welcome to today's program. We're indeed glad to be with you. You know, we have so many things to be thankful for. Of course, this is Thanksgiving week, and we are indeed thankful, one, to be on the air with our program. We're thankful to be Americans. We're thankful for the great uh, things that were passed on to us by our founding fathers. And you know, just like the, this great 1911 pistol, and it is, it's a great, a great pistol. Happens to be in our 460 cartridge, but you know, the, the principles of Browning's design that was finalized back in 1911 were so good that even after all this time, this basic pistol design has not been eclipsed. Uh, we don't know of any other pistol design that comes close to the strength inherent in the basic Browning design. Now why is that? Why is that? He started off with principles that he knew were sound. Just like our Constitution. Principles that our founding fathers knew were sound. Freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of the press, and the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. See, our founding fathers understood principles that worked. Just like John Browning, just like mechanical principles, there are principles in life, principles in government, principles about humanity that are known to work. Water's wet. Freedom works with a moral base. And that's why we want to preserve our own constitution, our own way of life. That's why we're here. That's why we struggle so long. These 11 years, you realize if we are so fortunate as to remain on the air, get on in January, you realize that will begin our 12th year on the air of demonstrating how guns are properly used, why we as Americans have guns, why we need to continue to have guns in this country. The tools of freedom. That's what it's about. Tools of freedom, certainly freedom of speech. But let me tell you what. These firearms are the teeth of our Constitution. You know, we see uh, some people have bad dogs, you know, have German Shepherds, have, have Dobermans and all, you know. Well, what would happen if those guard dogs had their teeth taken out? Now all they could do is run up to an intruder and whack them with their gums. You know, what if they lose their teeth? Well, they can't be a very effective watchdog. What they gonna do, lick them to death? What they gonna do? And that's why our Constitution absolutely must retain its inherent safeguard of having the population armed. Our Constitution must retain its teeth right there in the Bill of Rights, Second Amendment. That's why we're here. That's why we're trying to reach more people. That's why we do all the programming we do is trying to, to inform people of the truth and what does work. Friends, we're glad to have you with us today. You know, we had a victory. You did not see this on any of the major news sources. You know, this airline security bill has passed. Guess what? There's a provision in that bill to allow pilots to carry guns. Now, why are the anti-gunners so terrified of this? I can tell you why. The pilots are not federal officers. The pilots don't, are not affiliated with any police agency of any governing body. The pilots are what? Regular citizens. These pilots are not affiliated with any government agency, any police agency, any military agency. Yes, the airlines are regulated by the FAA. Yes, that's true. But the pilots are private citizens, just like you and I. And the anti-gun people understand that if the passengers say, wait a minute, those pilots, they're just regular, they're like us. They're, they're carrying guns. We can do that. Yeah, they're going to safeguard the airplane with firearms. Well, wait a minute. I can do that at my house. Yeah, I can do that. This is why the anti-gunners are terrified 
the word is going to get out that yes, pilots are going to be legally authorized to carry firearms on those planes. You know, it's so simple. If the Air Force has been authorized to shoot down an airliner and kill everybody on board, why not authorize the pilots to at least try and take the, the aircraft back? Why not? So you don't need box cutters, you don't need guns, you don't need anything to, to overpower people. My goodness, martial arts uh, uh, instructors are out there that will tell you in a moment that a hand can be a terrible weapon or a foot or leg. You know, you don't need unless somebody in the cockpit or somebody on the aircraft is armed with guns because firearms in the hands of someone that's reasonably trained is going to be more effective. But firearms always beat karate when you have someone that, that is, is reasonably trained to use them. And yes, they'll all be trained. So, friends, so I see this as a victory. Now, we're still waiting on the outcome. I'll hear later today, we're, this is Wednesday as we're taping this today, I'll, I'll talk to Larry Pratt later today about where this confiscation bill is in Congress or in the defense authorization bill. I flatly don't know as we're speaking, but we are on top of that. So, see, friends, we're getting some victories. Had some more court cases thrown out. Third U.S. Uh, court of Appeal has thrown out a lawsuit by the city of Philadelphia against the gun companies. And we're winning one after another. You see, we can win. We can win. It just takes us doing everything we can, ever getting everyone we can in this fight, because it is a fight for our freedom. Friends, we have a great show for you. We're going to look back at some of the things we've done over these 11 years. And I hope you enjoy our program today. Thank you so much for being with us. We'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned for more of The Shooting Show after these important messages. The Shooting Show will be right back after this break for your local cable company or TV station. This is the new Georgia Arms 20th anniversary catalog. Of course, has our a memorial there to our good friend Jim Clark there on the cover. This is a terrific catalog from the finest ammunition maker in the United States. They have all kinds of great prices on all sorts of ammunition. 243 Winchester, 270s, uh, 7.62 by 39 Russian, uh, all kinds of great stuff. They've even got 308 tracers, 30 out six tracers, uh, all kinds of of neat stuff here in this great new Georgia Arms catalog. They have components if you want to load your own ammo and look here we've got the shooting show in our new 460 rolling kit on sale as well. Georgia Arms has the best prices for custom grade ammunition that I'm aware of in the United States and guess what else they're helping to support our shooting show. Friends give them a call today free phone call free catalog 1-800-624-6861 1-800-624-6861, Georgia Arms, and please remember to tell them that you heard it and saw it here on our program. Now, friends, like, let's take a look at our cartridges here, and you can see, let's start on the left here. We have the uh, very common 308 Winchester, and next to it, we have the 30 out 6. In the middle there, we have the 338 Winchester Magnum, and immediately uh, to the right of the of the middle, we have the 458 Winchester Magnum, and over on our far right, that's the 375 H and H. Now you can see there's quite a bit of difference in length, uh, and these are just some cartridges we had handy to give you an idea. Now then, the 308, for instance, has about 
25, 2600 foot pounds of muzzle energy, the 30 out 6, 27 or so 100 foot pounds of muzzle energy. The 338 is pretty potent now. It's not uh, far behind the 375. That 338 there in the middle has roughly 3,900 or so foot pounds of muzzle energy. The 458 Winchester has about 5,000 pounds of muzzle energy, give or take a few hundred there. And of course, our 375, we're going to talk roughly 42, 4,300. So the 375 is a good compromise between it has much better uh, aerodynamic characteristics, say, than the 458, which is uh, just about a straight wall case, there, as you can see. Uh, and it has the ability to handle heavier bullets than our 338. So it is really a most useful cartridge. Now, friends, I want to show you something that I think a lot of you will find interesting. You see, the 375 has a belt on the end of the cartridge case there. It's what they call a belted magnum. And you see, they wanted a rimless cartridge that would feed through a magazine. But since you don't have a lot of shoulder here, in fact, not much at all, to headspace the round on, they uh, came up with an idea for a cartridge belt. Now then, on a case, for instance, such as our 458 Winchester would be another really good candidate for a belt to headspace on because here you have no shoulder at all. You have uh, very nearly a straight wall case here. But this idea has also carried over into newer and more modern cartridges like the 338 Winchester Magnum. Now you'll see we have a fairly sharp shoulder here on the 338, but it still retains the belt. Now let's take a look at our 30 out 6. It was with a sharper shoulder, certainly, than our 375. Uh, the 30 out 6 head spaces on the shoulder there of the case, and you have a true rimless design. Well, it was thought by a lot of people if you didn't have the belt, well, you wouldn't have a true magnum, whereas on certainly it's useful on a 375. But when you come to a 338, that belt is probably not necessary. In fact, we're seeing a lot of new cartridges appear on the scene that certainly uh, qualify as magnums, but uh, the belt does cause a little complication uh, of feeding in some magazines. It's just a little rough edge there that uh, has to go over another cartridge. So I'm thinking, in fact, uh, uh, we never thought of magnum rifle cartridges as being especially subject to fashion, but in a lot of cases, in fact, this belt is indeed apparently just fashion. All right, friends, let's take a quick look at our Browning Stainless Stalker. Uh, you can see it has a very nicely fluted bolt, has a low lift bolt handle, also has a cocking indicator right here. Uh, and of course, here's your safety like so. It has a magazine that drops out. And you have a box here, uh, very convenient. It holds three of the Magnum cartridges in the magazine. Of course, you could have one in the chamber for a total of four. Now, this gun has the excellent William Sights and uh, uh, really is not a bad idea on a heavy rifle uh, to have a good set of open sights. Of course, this is a scope mount. We're currently missing the scope. This is the takedown lever here. You just pull the uh, bolt up, and if I'll take it off safe, it'll move. Pull it back and press the lever right there, and then the bolt comes out for ease of cleaning. Stay tuned for more of the shooting show after these important messages. Imagine this scene, if you will. A mother has been pulled over in a random road stop. She was stopped for no particular reason. It was just her turn. 
while her car is being unconstitutionally searched and her personal effects scrutinized, Osama bin Laden speeds by in a convertible as native robes flapping in the breeze. The officer does his duty. He ignores bin Laden because he's busy finding a reason to write the mother a ticket. Far-fetched? Well, see if you think what follows could have allowed something this preposterous to happen. A year ago, in September 2000, Abby Newman was stopped for no reason at all. It was a random road stop, and the Virginia State Trooper who had pulled her over admitted at the scene that he had no probable cause. We know this because both her recorder and the video in the patrol car recorded the event. Regardless, he demanded to see her papers. Namely, he wanted to see her driver's license. Newman was constitutionally correct in refusing to identify herself, although the courts have gone along with this police state development in contemporary law enforcement. The courts have agreed with the officer's view that you might be wanted in 10 states. Well, of course, that logic would justify stopping every driver, every day, on every road. Make no mistake, it is based on the assumption that we are all subjects and criminally suspect. In the end, Newman was convicted by a jury of seven of driving without a license and obstructing justice and fined $1,300. While her driver's license had expired shortly before the arrest, and that is technically a gotcha, but obstructing justice? In a constitutionally run courtroom, the lack of a license would never have been admissible as evidence because there was no probable cause for the officer to stop her in the first place. He was just fishing and Abby Newman was part of his catch of the day. To underscore the danger of this abuse of power and the danger it poses to gun owners, consider a Denver Federal Appeals Court decision a few weeks after the August conviction of Abby Newman. The court, by a five to four decision, furthered the erosion of the Fourth Amendment by allowing police to ask stop motorists, like Newman, whether they have a loaded gun, even if officers don't suspect weapons are in the vehicle. As the attorney representing the defendant in the, def in the Denver appeal asked, how many of these things have to happen before we realize we are living in a police state and not a place governed by the Constitution? In the Newman case, the judge refused to allow the defendant to introduce evidence and put witnesses on the stand that would have helped her case. This underscores the need for sweeping reform of the arbitrary power afforded judges, powers which allow them to feed information to juries as if they were mushrooms. You know, keep them in the dark and shovel in the dung. Newman had been charged with assaulting the officer. Of course, his own video disproved that, and Newman was prepared to put an expert on the stand who would have used the video to show that the cop is a liar. The charge was dropped, so no witness. There would have been further embarrassment if the video had been entered into evidence. The patrolman and his colleague were recorded speculating about the far-out nature of some of Newman's reading material found in the car, including a copy of the Constitution. The arresting officer even speculated whether some of the reading material was illegal. GOA's Director of Public Affairs, Sheriff Richard Mack, was prepared to testify as to the unconstitutionality of the random road stops without probable cause. Mack was simply not allowed on the stand. The judge was obviously concerned that a jury might get confused with the truth of the Constitution as presented by a retired uh, peace officer in contrast with the perversion of it that has been made by recent court rulings. What would other judges think of him if he let a jury make a decision based on the Constitution? These two cases very clearly demonstrate how inextricably intertwined are our liberties and how one part of the Bill of Rights cannot fall without bringing down the rest along with it. These cases also show off uh, of course, uh, police, how off course police work can get. Does anyone really think that we are safer because Abby Newman was arrested and convicted? Was it justice? One last thought. Please do not get mad at the patrolman who made the arrest. He was just following orders. From Washington, for Gun Owners of America, this is Larry Pratt. To join Gun Owners of America, you can call them at 888-886-GUNS, 888-864-867 or find them on the internet at gunowners.org. You know, friends, it was called to my attention recently by one of, our, one of our viewers that we do have a number of handicapped folks out there that uh, still need to be able to defend themselves, whether they be in a wheelchair, 
due to some arthritic condition or maybe a, some sort of accident such as a car wreck or whatever. But you know, uh, one of the things that our society has done has made some concessions uh, for handicapped people. I think that's a good thing because uh, in the past it was very difficult for someone maybe in a wheelchair that may, may otherwise be perfectly normal uh, but just not have mobility to walk. Uh, it, it was very difficult for them to go say across the street because even a sidewalk could be a real hindrance to, to some of those folks. Well, guess what? A lot of, of handicapped people now are are wanting to do things just like uh, the other people. And I think it's a great thing. I think that they should pursue their dreams and, and whatever else, just like, just like anybody else. But you know what? The handicap space uh, face a special condition, and one of which is if, you're, if they're in a wheelchair or maybe on a walker or something, or maybe on crutches, something like that, they may not be able to take flight. And, and who does the criminal pick on, right? Think about this. Criminal is not stupid. Now, he may not be very smart, but they're certainly not stupid. Uh, they're going to pick on people that cannot defend themselves. Older people, handicapped people, uh, women, children. People that would not be as capable of, of putting up a fight. Well, uh, my, the, the individual that called asked we ought to do something about if a handicapped person chooses to be armed, why not talk about that? And I said, you know, that's really a good idea. Because uh, if someone has the, the normal use of their arms and their hands, well, I don't think there's any reason why they shouldn't consider being armed because they're the ones that uh, are likely to be picked on first, to be robbed or abused or, or brutalized. So guess what, friends? We need to think about that. Let me say this in the beginning, and, and I like all types of guns. Uh, we have, of course, semi-automatics that we use. We have revolvers that we use. But in this particular case, and I've said many times, for the average person that's not going to be literally uh, using their gun or, or shooting it almost every day, the revolver is a better choice because it's, it's simpler in the way it operates. And if you choose a semi-automatic, that's fine. It's no problem if that's what you want to do. But the revolver has some real advantages, especially in the case of a handicapped person. Remember that the revolver can work under almost any any situation. All you have to do is point, pull, and fire. Okay. The semi-automatic does not work the same way. Uh, if I can get my <laughs> a lot of clothes on today, I tell you, because it is cold. It's below freezing out here on the range. All right, remember now, on a semi-automatic, if you do not have a locked wrist, if you don't have this wrist, if it's not locked, the semi-automatic may malfunction because that's the way they work. You know, the, the slide here has to slide back and forth on the frame to eject the spent case and load itself, load another one. So if you, if you limp wrist a semi-automatic, there's a very good possibility that you will have a malfunction or a jam, as some people like to say. You've got to have a locked wrist. Very, very important, because every last one of them will jam. Friends. Every, I don't care. You got your SIG. SIG's a nice gun, though, jam. It's OK. I mean, they will. They will. Every semi-automatic. All mechanisms will malfunction. Revolvers will malfunction, too. But without a proper procedure or shooting procedure, Every semi-automatic will malfunction at some point. It will do it. It's likely, if you don't have this, and notice this straight line here in my wrist, to my hand, to the gun itself, say it's going to work okay. But I've got a good grip. The frame has to have a solid platform. Now then, if you're in a wheelchair or, or some other way disabled where maybe you don't have two hands to grip your gun, and I've said this before, Maybe one of your hands is tied up. Maybe you're in a struggle and you can't get a good grip on the gun. The revolvers will still work. So uh, this is something that is really, really important. And for someone without a lot of strength uh, in their arms, I would suggest a smaller, lighter 38 Special revolver. Or maybe a 357 Magnum, which you can shoot both cartridges in. Some people in wheelchairs have tremendous upper body strength. Some of them do recoil would not be much of a problem to them. 
But friends, let me tell you what, if you're having to defend yourself, uh, the, the revolver, I think, is by far the best gun for, uh, for anyone that does not have full use of their physical qualities. And for those of us who, who happen not to be handicapped, that's something to think about, too. You police officers pay attention because many times you'll have to use your gun in a struggle. Think about that. And you may not have, somebody here may have hold of one of your hands or, or what if, in fact, one of, your, one of your hands is injured. Well, realize the revolver can be operated smoothly by either hand because you, have, you don't have a manual safety to push off. So that's something to think about. Uh, the revolver does have a reliability edge when it comes to that. Stay tuned for more of the shooting show after these important messages. stocks, for pistol grips, for regular stocks, for replacement stocks, for magazine extension tubes for your shotgun, for magazine replacement springs for your shotgun. How about the executive eye scraper, the executive letter opener, all from Choate Machine and Tool when you call for a free catalog. You can get the executive letter opener, a multi-purpose tool, or the executive eye scraper, a multi-purpose tool, for only your choice, only $2 when you call for a free Choate catalog. You can get both of them for $4, a $10 value. Friends, if you're a shooter or a gun owner, you need one of the Choate Machine and Tool Company catalogs. Call them today, 1-800-972-6390. In Ballinab, Arkansas, they're helping to support our project. You need one of their catalogs. Again, 1-800-972-6390. And please remember to tell them that you saw it here on our show. And now for our support group, friends, we have custom leather work in Saddlery in Denham Springs, Louisiana. We have Brooks Communication in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We have Dennis Crocker Firearms Training and Grass Information there in South Carolina. We have Gearlings Equipment Rentals in Southern California. And we have Mike and Sherry Harris Pilot Services and Consulting in South Carolina. Friends, we're out of time. We'll see you on the next show.